we are peaceful, if we are happy, we can smile, and everyone in our family, our entire society, will benefit from our peace. So this morning, you can go ahead and go ahead and light it. I have a super special guest this morning. My good friend, Andy, he's a junior editor at Eifrig Publishing, is Hawkins Harper. I hope you all recognize him. He's also featured in one of my Eifrig Publishing books. Sometimes I feel like I'm just not good enough. The more I remember that I'm good enough, the better I do. And when I feel good enough, I can help others feel good enough too. I'm not perfect, but that does not mean I'm not good enough. I have been good enough from the beginning, and I'm getting better all the time. And I choose to feel really good about myself. I choose to, I choose to know I'm good enough just the way I am, and I'm a really great kid. Thank you, Hawkins. <laughs> Good morning. morning. What a nice way to start the service with the beautiful music shared by my dad. Listening to my dad on the piano is one of my earliest recollections. This recurring childhood memory has me sitting on the hearth of the fireplace, my dog's head snuggled in my lap, with Chopin or Scott Joplin or the latest hymn for Sunday, dancing off the keys in the living room. It is secured in the bank of safe spaces in my mind that I can pull up when I am feeling stressed out and need to retreat to a calmer place. This is a memory I can rely on to bring me a sense of peace that I can feel throughout my body. Thank you, Dad, for a lifetime of wonderful music. It makes me happy. (laughs) So how are you all feeling this morning? I hope you all woke up feeling relaxed and refreshed, feeling vibrant, radiant, full of joy, gratitude, and positive energy and ready to experience a great new day. There's a little part of me that feels a bit nervous about standing up here, especially following the amazing service last week, and sharing some of my stories with you, while tapping at times in a silly manner on my head, but nothing that a few deep breaths and a round of VT can't help alleviate. I choose to have a good day, and I love, honor, and accept myself. I choose to feel calm today, and I love, honor, and accept myself. I choose to stay relaxed while I'm standing at the pulpit, and I love, honor, and accept myself. I am relaxed. I am calm. I will speak slowly. I can share my stories freely. I won't feel silly standing here and tapping on my chin. I am calm. I am relaxed. And I'm ready to have a really good day. This morning, I'll be sharing experiences with a tool called Emotional Freedom Technique or tapping. So this is an important thing to know. This is not a replacement for any sort of medical help or psychological help. It's simply a tool. It's a technique I first heard about from my therapist about six years ago. I started seeing a therapist after finding myself facing periods of disassociation after some childhood trauma was triggered by the Sandusky affair. And I needed to find ways out of my fight or flight response and back into my thinking brain and sensory body. I needed to be more present, especially as life was filled with all kinds of real-time stressors as well. Being self-employed with constant financial worries, in a struggling relationship, raising a tween and a teen with all the angst that that brings, and managing a complicated life on two continents. I needed to de-stress. At the same time, I was also worried about how much my stress was putting a strain on my girls. I had been looking for calming tools for Casey, who was about 10 at the time, to help her deal with some extreme emotions that periodically seemed to take over her mind and body since she was little. Small moments of disappointment or frustration would often turn into huge episodes of rage. For instance, a purchase she considered to be expensive and superfluous could cause her to completely melt down. I think now that these outbursts were often a response to stress that was mine, which she had empathetically picked up on, and she didn't know what to do with it. She would get caught up in a tough emotion with no apparent way out. It was terrible to watch her sometimes go through hours of agonizing over something trivial, like the superfluous air lounger I bought for her off a Facebook ad. She would remain remain trapped in a negative emotion long after having forgotten what had triggered her. So I was ready to try anything, even tapping on my head. At first examination, the system of stimulating specific meridian points on the body while repeating affirmations of self-love appeared to be a bit hokey and too far out there for me but it had been recommended by my licensed therapist. During my initial research, I had found stories of miraculous healings and transformations, and it seemed a bit like quackery. 
Scrolling through YouTube, I found some quirky practitioners who invited me to access my divine powers and to allow great abundance in all areas of my life. I wasn't sure about any divine powers, and abundance had always seemed like a bad word to me. I was a skeptic. But years before, I had read about meridian points and had tried out acupuncture from the Chinese medicine and had even done some meditation on the seven energy chakras from the Indian tradition. Those practices seemed okay to me, and the science around EFT appeared to be growing too. So when a 10-day worldwide online tapping summit came across my radar, I turned in to listen to a sports psychologist talk about EFT for sports and pain. As an athlete, this seemed like a good starting point. She talked about how pain can sometimes be stored in your body well after it has served its purpose of notifying you of an injury or illness. A year prior, I had torn my PCL on the first day coaching Sadie's middle school softball team. Having her mom as a coach was embarrassing enough, but for ha to have me fall while demonstrating an easy catch on day one was just mortifying for her. Or so I assumed. It was definitely humiliating for me. A year later, long after the injury had healed, I was still experiencing a lot of pain in my knee. So after listening to a brief explanation, I tapped along with the sports psychologist on various points on my body, acknowledging the pain, and then repeating affirmations about loving and forgiving myself while running through the emotions of embarrassment and humiliation in my head that my body was still harboring. Then I gave myself permission to forgive myself for the embarrassing moment. Five minutes later, after about six rounds of tapping, I no longer had the pain, and it never came back. Hmm, that felt a little bit miraculous, and I was feeling a little bit divinely powerful too, with my mystical tapping fingers, and I was definitely ready to learn more. Shortly thereafter, I called Casey over to my computer to have her try it out as well. She climbed onto my lap, lap and we wandered through more YouTube vi videos, finally stopping at the channel for Brad Yates, whom I later discovered is one of the leading experts in tapping in the US. We were both transfixed, and we tapped along to one video after the next for over an hour. I could feel her settle down in my lap. Tapping soon became part of our regular routine, both as a nightly ritual and in times of crisis. It was making a real difference in her response to stress, both hers and mine, and the battle with extreme emotions began to get easier as I began to intervene with a quick tapping session whenever some bit of frustration or disappointment or anger would set her off. After tapping, the potential two-hour tantrum was clipped to a few minutes. Whew. I was starting to become a believer. This past week, I've reflected a bit on my kids' childhoods for the service, wondering what all has been stored in their energy archives of good memories and bad experiences, and how their brains will access both as they respond to future stress situations, what strong and healthy foundations were built, and what damage has been done. They certainly each have a tank full of positive memories, but I also recall those moments of extreme emotion that seemed to pull Casey to the brink of despair, or the days that Sadie would be so stressed out about school that she would wail into the night. I have also been reflecting on my own memories from childhood, searching for the defining moments, the nightly serenades on the piano, the smell of homemade bread fresh out of the oven, playing cards, fighting with my brother, climbing trees, having a game of wiffle ball in the backfield, watching the Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom on a Sunday night with my mom always knitting away or braiding rugs with her busy hands. It was a good childhood and it gave me a sense of Urvertrauen, which is a deep-seated basic trust that helped shape me, etching my go-to responses into my neural writing. I also had my various levels of bad experiences, like this distant memory of being forgotten in the tub for what seemed like hours probably minutes, and I was old enough to be bathing alone, while my folks were hosting a UU dinner party downstairs. <laughs> and then the time when my brother and I, Dan, climbed up to the uppermost branches of the tallest tree in the backyard and didn't know how to get back down, calling out to our mom to rescue us. You figured out how to get up there, you figure out how to get down. <laughs> then when I was a teen, my mom faced her fir first bout with breast cancer. And I recall how stoically hard it was how hard it was to stoically field sympathetic phone calls from caring friends while periodically hearing her cry at night. It was out of my control, and it was scary. There were also a few really bad experiences that in a moment's time etched a lasting mental response in my developing brain. At age 10, while we were visiting friends out west, I joined their daughters on a bike ride to the playground. 
That short excursion set a permanent fight or flight response in my brain after being approached by two disturbed young men. Not old enough to really understand what had happened, I immediately buried the memories of the ensuing assault. But the disassociation response was wired into my system, ready to pop up when triggered as an adult. All of us have some big or small traumas, moments of fear, sadness, grief, anger from our childhoods that pop up in our responses to current situations, whether we realize it or not. Our responses to new situations are programmed, pre-programmed to an extent, by our own past experiences, as our neurons shoot down the paths most traveled, as well as by ancient responses stored in our hindbrains that developed to keep us alive and safe millions of years ago. But in most cases, those are activated when we are no longer really in need of survival skills. That fight or flight response is simply embedded in our brains. It raises our cortisol levels, it muddies our thoughts, hindering us from making good decisions. Our body stress negatively impacts our health and happiness. It causes pain and illness and discomfort and unease. EFT helps you untether your go-to responses that are ripping around your beaten paths in your brain by combining a verbal element which is processed in the front part of your brain, with a phys physical stimulator on the meridian points, which is processed in the ancient back part of your brain. We tap naturally without thinking about it in many common behaviors, such as patting a baby's back to calm her down, drumming a pencil on a desk during a test, rubbing our temples when we try to back away from anger. It is similar to petting a dog who does not have the frontal brain function to process language completely, to let them know that they are safe, that they are a good dog, rather than just expressing in words that everything is okay. Tapping helps untether the emotional and physical responses. The pain in my knee was important when it happened, so I knew that I was injured. But a year later, the pain was simply stuck there, together with emotions of mortification and embarrassment. And I was unable to let it go, even though it was no longer needed. When I recollected the injury, the emotions I felt when it happened, acknowledged them, affirmed that I can love and forgive myself for what happened, and then gave myself, and then gave myself permission to let it go, while stimulating the back of my brain by tapping on the energy points, my mind and body could untether the emotion from the pain. And it was truly, miraculously gone for good. Even though I have this pain, I love, honor, and accept myself. Even though it was so embarrassing to fall during Sadie's practice, I love, honor, and accept myself. I no longer need this pain. I can let go of this pain. When I was finally ready to recall the events in Denver in therapy, I found that in addition to the trauma, I harbored feelings of guilt. What if I had not said anything when, when they approached us and they took our bikes? What if I had not run? What if I had been able to scream? My thinking brain knew that my 10-year-old kid was not responsible for what happened, but my body and my emotional brain still did. My sub subconscious response was, be perfect. Don't do anything wrong, it could cause bad consequences. I was a really good kid. I did my best to do everything right, to keep everything under control. 35 years after the event, when the therapy helped me to understand what was going on in my head, the actual relief came when I used EFT and was able to forgive myself for letting the traumatic experience happen. And I could give myself permission to let it go. The little situations that would trigger me were not actually dangerous situations anymore. I let my body and my brain know that the fight or flight response, which developed over evolution to keep me safe, and I needed in that, that day, was no longer necessary. One of the basic premises of EFT is that we have learned, but often subconscious, core limiting beliefs. It is my fault. I am not good enough. I don't deserve good things. Abundance is bad. We can alleviate them by first acknowledging these beliefs, owning them, feeling where they hide out in our bodies. We then give ourselves permission to untether them and to forgive ourselves, and then to choose to love ourselves despite our perceived and subconscious shortcomings and failures that we picked up along the way. The message we give ourselves is that we are deserving of unconditional love and we are good enough right now, just as we are. So because this is a Unitarian community, I shall provide a little bit of science behind tapping during the offertory. How does it work? Because it is so strange. It has nothing to do with anything we learned in graduate school. So one of the biggest hurdles that I and others find is that it sounds like magic to introduce this. I mean, how can something that looks so simple really do anything, right? And how can any one intervention help such a wide variety of issues? EFT 
was definitely outside the academic box when I started doing it. There was only one paper uh, that was a randomized controlled trial that, that could be offered as evidence-based medicine. Naturally, people's first reaction is it looks funny. There's a lot of things we now take for granted though that probably looked really funny at first. The more important to me and other professionals is that it's grown and expanded due to an ongoing body of pretty impressive clinical research. When I first saw the results that were possible with EFT or tapping, I needed to see for myself would it hold up under scientific scrutiny. So I began conducting clinical research trials. Research on tapping continues to be conducted at renowned academic and scientific institutions internationally. The evidence-supported published studies help to verify the findings of the early adapters and the millions of people around the world who are applying this safe and effective approach today. Signs of increased healing processes occur when using this tapping stimulation, affecting the electromagnetic centers and pathways throughout our bodies while we focus on conscious and unconscious feelings, sensations, and memories. Now, for a long time, scientists weren't really convinced about this connection between these places of electrical skin conductivity and the meridian acupoints. To date, there are more than 100 studies and review articles published in professional peer-reviewed journals showing tapping to be effective and working quite rapidly and with a wide variety of issues and populations. And when you stimulate certain acupuncture points, it sends signals to the amygdala, the part of the brain that codes threat, the part of the brain that codes many emotions. And what tapping does is it reduces the amount of arousal in the amygdala. So if something from your past is unresolved for some reason, maybe it was too emotionally overwhelming, then to the brain and the limbic system, it's as if the threat is still ongoing. And if that's happening, then the body's stress response is ongoing as well. The intelligence of the body doesn't want to be unhappy. The body is just stuck. The idea that every trauma you have uh, gets perceived by your body uh, and then stored as a basically malware or software program in your acupuncture meridians. And when you do EFT, you're essentially running the program just long enough to hit the delete key and uninstall the program. So the person then is no longer anchored to the past and the same emotion is no longer the same chemical feedback from the environment that keeps the same gene turned on and the other gene turned off. So it's kind of like watching a movie now instead of actually reliving it. So you open the file, the malware is gone, that's emotional freedom. And so you do hear things that sound absolutely miraculous, but it's not the tapping that's miraculous, it's your body. So who knows what we'll uncover as the research continues to be published. What we already have is a scientifically valid foundation of understanding for how tapping may work. That there was something about this tapping thing that was making a big difference from every other thing I had ever tried. It's spreading quickly because it's so simple. That's one of the greatest virtues. It's going to change the world. So, now you've all seen what it looks like, heard a little bit of the philosophy and science behind this magical tool that you have right at your fingertips to help you relieve stress, get out of fight or flight, mitigate pain. What if it could also help boost your energy level, lose weight, kick your bad habits, keep your cool, fight depression, optimize your athletic and artistic performances, ease anxiety, get a better night's sleep? What if it could help your kids stop worrying about the start of school or general anxiety Help them deal with bullies or self-doubt. Focus better. Help them start off every day a good day. This is where the skeptical mind kicks back in. Nope, not buying it. If it sounds too, be, too good to be true, it probably is. So enough of the talk about it. I hope you will all join me and give it a try. In refer reference to last week's beautiful service, let's get out the yoga pants, out of the closet, roll out the mat, and start tapping. First, in order for each of you to get the most out of each quick session, think for a moment about something that is causing you stress, concern, worry, fear, pain, sadness, or any other emotional response that is occupying space in your body. Take a moment to call that up and then feel where it sits with you. For me, when I am sad or upset, the sadness gets caught in my throat, making it difficult to swallow. 
Nervousness and anxiety can be caught up like butterflies in your belly. Anger might go to your ears. Feel where you can sense the emotion and focus on that for just a moment. And then take a moment to assess, on a scale of 1 to 10, how that makes you feel, the burning trees in the Amazon, general state of affairs. There are, just think of something or something personal, worried about my kid going to school tomorrow. First, I will demonstrate the tabbing points. So in this first round, don't, you don't need to repeat after me. Um, you can just try the tabbing points so you can see where they are. And I will try to demonstrate them clearly. As we start the setup statement, we start on the side of our hand called the karate chop. And this is what I would be saying, and we'll do this together as a group, um, loud or quietly as you like. Even though I have situations in my life that prevent me from feeling peaceful and calm, I am willing to give myself permission to relax and feel peaceful inside, and I love, honor, and accept myself. You can do a couple rounds of that. Then you go into the reminder phase, where you can identify and acknowledge the feeling that you're having, and then you tap on a sequence of points. On the corner of your eyebrow, I don't feel relaxed. On the side of your eye, on the bone, right outside the side of your eye, I don't feel peaceful. Under your eye, I don't feel calm. Under your nose, I am ready to release what is ever is preventing me from feeling peaceful and calm. On your chin, on the little crack in your chin, I am ready to feel peaceful inside. On your collarbone, my body is ready to feel calm. Under your arm, my mind is ready to be quiet and still. And on the top of your head, I am willing to let go and feel peaceful and calm inside now. For the second round, you can acknowledge how you want to change how you're feeling. And you can start to provide a more positive alternative. We're going to do it again just to get practice on the spots. On the eyebrow, I feel agitated or angry or frustrated or nervous. On the outside of the eye, I still feel on edge. Under your eye, I still have people and situations in my life that create discord within me. Under your nose, maybe I can't change my circumstance right now, but I can change how I feel. On your chin, I am ready to release these negative feelings. On your collarbone, I am ready to allow myself to feel more peaceful. Under your arm, I am ready to experience feeling calm inside. Top of your head, I honor myself for taking time to restore my sense of peace and calm. You can continue to do as many rounds of that as you, as you feel, and then you can end it with an affirmative positive change. Eyebrow, I feel much more peaceful inside. Outside the eye, my body feels more relaxed. My mind is more calm and quiet. It feels good to come into a state of peace and harmony. It feels good to have the power to change my mood and attitude. It feels good to have the power to shift my emotional state. Under your arm, it feels good to be more balanced and aligned. Top of the head, I love the feeling of peaceful and calm in my body, mind, and spirit now. So that was our practice round. Um, now I'm going to play a video um, by Brad Yates, um, who's a fellow I got to know throughout the process of my journey learning about EFT. Um, I chose this one. Um, it's about staying present, um, which is what I struggled with mostly with my PTSD. I hope you all tap along. If you want, you can repeat out loud what he says after he says it at each tapping point. You don't have to repeat the words out loud. You can also think of your own words you'd like to think in your head um, and that reflect how you are feeling, or you can just choose not to think anything at all. But I know we're not big on group responses, and in reference to Humor Sunday, I will not make you ba or moo. <laughs> so Get there, uh, taking full responsibility for your own well-being. I choose to feel centered and grounded. I choose to feel centered and grounded. And I choose to love and accept myself. And I choose to love and accept myself. I choose to feel centered and grounded. I choose to feel centered and grounded. And I choose to love and honor myself. And I choose to love and honor myself. I choose to feel centered and grounded. I choose to feel centered and grounded. I choose to be right here, right now. I choose to be right here. As present as possible. As present as possible. So as to get maximum benefit out of this moment. So as to get maximum benefit out of this moment. I choose to feel centered and grounded. I choose to feel centered and grounded. And I choose to deeply and completely. And I choose to deeply and completely. 
love, honor, and accept myself. I choose to feel centered and grounded. I choose to feel centered and grounded. Feeling as calm and confident as possible. Allowing myself to be as present as possible. So I can be my best. So I can make the best choices. And take the best actions. And I choose to clear whatever might be in the way of that. What might be distracting me? What might keep me from being centered and grounded? Where does my mind go to? And what's going on inside? that allows me to go off to those places so that I'm not right here right now am I afraid of being centered and grounded am I afraid of being, centered and grounded? Am I afraid of being present am I afraid of being present am I afraid of being at my best because of the changes that might happen. Part of me might be saying, if I can be a little off kilter, if I can feel a little flighty, that'll help me stay safely in my comfort zone. All this fear of being at my best. Choose to clear that at a cellular level. Clearing that fear from every fiber of my being. And clearing it all the way back through my past. So that I can feel peace. So that I can feel centered. So that I can feel grounded. Grounded in this moment. Grounded in my highest self. Feeling centered and grounded in body, mind, and spirit. Take a deep breath. Go make great things happen. Thanks. When I first found Brad Yates online and I discovered that he was going to be in England and I was in Germany, um, I decided that Casey and I could go on a bus trip to London, a uh, 24-hour bus trip to London for 24 hours in London for a 24-hour bus ride back. But it was really an amazing experience. We spent 10 hours tapping with, with Brad. It was really remarkable. Um, and then I got in touch with him, and together we created a book. I wanted to be able to have this tool that was so helpful for me and for Casey to be able to share it with others. After the last tapping, take a deep breath and relax and see if your number indicating, indicating your level of stress has gone down. Um, it's definitely something that requires repetition. Um, but it can also be very effective quickly. Um, I wish I had discovered this tool in my, when I was a kid, and I wish I had, my kids had had it earlier, and I'm very happy to have discovered it before I began working with the kids at the refugee camp in Berlin. Um, it's also a really great tool, even without the language, to help kids calm down. Um, for them, it was fighting over a jump rope in the line, and I pulled them aside and did a very truncated version breathing in deep, tapping into their arms, it would get them out of the moment and calm them down. And then for more intense moments, we did a whole round of tapping. I hope that we can make a difference in the lives of kids everywhere 
to help loosen the tethers that their anxieties, fears, and trauma create before they establish a more permanent go-to response in their, in their bodies. Letting go gives us freedom, and freedom is the only condition for happiness. If, in our heart, we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety, or possessions, we cannot be free. Breathing in, I calm body and mind. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is the only moment. Go in peace. Thank you.